How you guys doing? This is Christopher McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. We've got two locations to serve you. Downtown San Antonio near the historic Riverwalk and on the northwest side of town near Babcock Road and 410 which is where we're filming from today. You can also find us online at alamomusiccenter.com and at the usual suspects like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and whatnot. And of course YouTube where you're finding us today. We've got a different video for you today. A question that we get a lot of times uh, from customers who come to the store, particularly when it comes to guitars, are uh, what's the difference between that guitar and that guitar? What, why is one guitar worth more than another? At a recent uh, guitar show in Dallas, I was approached with the same question uh, from a customer interested in some Taylor guitars. Why is that guitar thousands of dollars more than that guitar? So we figured it'd be a good idea to kind of address the uh, the elephant in the room, if you will, and talk about what makes a guitar worth more or more valuable than another, and particularly in regards to Taylor guitars, how they change their lineup. So we're going to be looking at three Taylor guitars today, uh, utilizing the most popular model in their lineup or more, most popular bottle, body size, which is the Grand Auditorium. Now this is a Taylor-specific body that Bob Taylor came out with in the mid-90s, it is just as wide and just as deep as a Dreadnought guitar, but it has a tighter waist on it. And as such, it feels like a smaller guitar when it's sitting in your lap because it sits a little bit lower down. Um, and it has a bit more zing to it um, on the trebles because of that tighter waist. You have a slightly smaller top, it moves more, and it's really what we would call uh, the do-all guitar. It's the Swiss Army knife of guitars if you will in that it it does a lot of things really well it's good for strumming it's good for finger picking it's good for flat picking what have you so this has been for a long time the perennial all-star in taylor's lineup the grand auditorium and taylor makes a lot of different models in this body shape they do this in uh what we call different series of guitar so in the full size taylor guitar catalog you have a 100 series, 200, 300, all the way up through a 900 series, and then some special series like the Koa series and the Presentation series, which are their own series of special wood appointments or like the top of the line uh, presentation series. This happens to be a Taylor 114 CE. So what that designates is the series, it's a 100 series, 14 is the body shape, Okay, so it's a one. It's a 14 because it's got a spruce top. That's the one, and a four being the Grand Auditorium. And then CE stands for cutaway with electronics on it. Most tailors are CE models because that's what you guys want. That's what the buying public wants. They want a cutaway model, so you have access to the higher uh, register up here, and you want electronics on it. Now, whether you use either of these things is sometimes immaterial. It's great for uh, someone who plays. Uh, maybe at a uh, coffee shop or an open mic or a church, you just plug in and go. Even if you don't play up this high, sometimes it's better to have and not need it than need it and not have it. And a lot of people uh, like the aesthetic of it. So that's the model number, 114CE. And this is the entry level into a full-size Taylor guitar. We're going to be looking at a 314CE and a 614CE in a moment. But let's talk about this one first of all and what the aspects to this guitar are. So this is uh, Taylor's entry level, like I said, in full-size guitars. It's manufactured in their Mexico factory, uh, which is not very far from their San Diego factory. Good, great quality guitars. They've been making them down there for years. They've made their cases and the baby Taylors down there for a long, long time. They really make good quality guitars. It's got a solid spruce top. Okay, It's got laminate uh, sapele back and sides. And I don't know if you can get this, um, if this will pick up on the video, but the back of this has a bold shape to it. Like it's 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 pushed out, not uh, as bad as say like a, an Ovation guitar would be. But this is pretty common with laminate guitars. Um, the back and sides are all laminate sapele. And if we can get a shot in in the inside, because of that bold shape in the back, um, there is no bracing on the back of the guitar. And the reason that there's no bracing is because that shape, that, that arch that's pressed into it, gives it the rigidity that it needs so that bracing is really unnecessary. In addition to that, uh, it kind of projects a little bit more because of that. 
Now, these guitars have some Pele necks, which is very similar to mahogany. It's nice and sturdy, satin finish has a great feel to it. They have ebony fingerboards, ebony bridges. Okay, there, there's no um, alternative man-made material in these guitars, it's real wood. Uh, black binding, um, chrome tuners, and they now have the ES2 system, um, as most tailors do at this point. All of the lineup, including the Baby Taylors, GS Minis, um, all the way up through the presentation series, now have their new pickup in it. Um, you're going to have uh, this uh, micarta uh, nut and saddle. Um, and what's really going to be distinct is the finish and the bracing. So the finish is going to be a satin finish on these. When you move up to, say, a 214 Deluxe, a lot of the construction that I'm talking about is very similar. There's some different appointments, and the finish becomes all gloss. But on these, it's a satin finish, similar to what you'll find on the Baby Taylors and GS Minis. Inside, the top bracing is Taylor's uh, scalloped bracing. It's a standard scalloped bracing that they utilize on these guitars. And that's a bracing that's been utilized on guitars for a long time. It's basically a standard X bracing forming a structural rigidity across the guitar with wood removed from the braces in order to uh, lighten the load, if you will. So in, on a scallop brace guitar, what you're doing is you're trying to remove some material so that it's stiff enough to support the strings, but gets to vibrate and resonate a little bit more. Okay, So that's a Taylor 114C. We're going to play it real quick so you can kind of hear it and then hear the differences as we move into the all solid wood guitars. One other thing of note on the 114 CE, um, this is true of everything below a 300 series in the Taylor lineup. It has a 1 and 11 16th inch nut. Uh, it's actually a little narrow for me. I'm used to the 1 and 3 quarter inch nut that's found on their normal series. But this is standard on all Baby Taylors, Big Babies, GS Minis, 100 and 200 series guitars. It's also an option on their uh, standard American made series. Uh, if you order one, you can get a 111 16th nut if you happen to like your nut like that. So let's take a look at the 300 series so that you can see the differences. All right, this here is a Taylor 314 CE. So again, it's that Grand Auditorium body with a spruce top. It's got the cutaway electronics, just like we saw in the 100 series, but this is now a 300 series guitar. So we move from 100 to 200 to 300. This is the entry level into Taylor's American-made guitars that are all solid wood. So these are made in their factory in El Cajon, California, outside San Diego, and they're made completely of solid wood materials. There's no laminate back and sides involved in these guitars. On the 300 series, the standard back and sides, if you get a spruce top, is going to be Sapele. This is the same material that was used on that 114 CE we just looked at, only this time it is not laminate, it is solid wood. It's bound with a black fiber binding and then it's got a solid spruce top on it. Now the back and sides are laminate but the top is going to be glossed and there's bracing in the back this time because it is not a laminate guitar. Moving up to the top, we have black binding coming up the neck. Um, it's going to be, again, an ebony fingerboard, ebony bridge. There's, again, there's no man-made alternative materials here. Rosewood overlay on the headstock. You've got chrome uh, tailor tuners. And like I was just mentioning on the nut, we've now moved to a one and three quarter inch nut, which is wider than the one eleven sixteenths. And to my hand and a lot of others, it's a very comfortable uh, spacing. Uh, it's a good width. It's not too wide. Uh, it's just wide enough and it really kind of bridges that gap if you want to both play finger style or, or flat pick or just strum, what have you. Um, the bracing on this changes. So we've moved to all solid wood. We've got a gloss on the top now. Uh, but the bracing inside has now switched over to uh, Taylor's forward shifted scallop bracing with a relief round. That's a mouthful, so let's talk about what that means. Years ago, Taylor started experimenting with their bracing. They continue to do so. They're always trying to innovate and make their guitars better. 
one of the things that they did is take that scallop bracing and move it forward a little bit, okay, and then create a relief route. By moving it forward, the bottom lower bout of the guitar here has uh, some more flexibility to move. And the relief route is basically a, ch a shallow channel that is carved throughout the border of the top here, uh, just near the, the curfling that holds the top to the side. And what that does is it acts like uh, a relief on a violin top, and it just allows the top to move a little bit more, uh, giving you greater resonance. They've been doing this since about the mid-2000s, the mid-aughts at this point. Um, it's a great value in an acoustic guitar. So 300 series, 400 series are going to have the same bracing and uh, similar appointments. The 400 series has different tone wood, different uh, binding. It's all gloss, but it's still going to share the same bracing at this point. Once you move into a 500 series, you, we start to get into some of Taylor's newest bracing, which we'll see in just a moment. But let's give a listen to this and you can see how it compares to the 114. Okay, now let's check out the 614 as a comparison. Okay, we're cheating here a little bit because this is also a limited edition, but it'll serve the purposes we have well. This is a 614 CE limited edition with a really cool armrest bevel here. Now again, it's the same body size we've been looking at, but now we've moved up into some of the, the higher end models in Taylor's lineup. These generally are starting at about three grand or more. Always check our website for the latest on pricing. Um, the bracing changes, the finish changes, um, of course the tone would changes as you go through the series. So none of these are going to be an exact comparison to the other. And that's kind of the point. This is what we're trying to show you is, is why, why you're paying more and what you're getting for that money. In the 600 series, it's, it's a Grand Auditorium cutaway electronic on the 614 CE. We've got a thin finish. Uh, the finish on this is about the thickness of a sheet of notebook paper, 3.5 mils. Um, this also has a Torify top on it, which Taylor started last year. They take the spruce and basically bake it. Uh, roast it to a nice medium well and that opens up the top it, it basically uh, gives you this this played in sound uh, that you would get maybe after playing for the guitar for a number of years uh, that would occur naturally the back and sides on these um, are beautiful maple um, this is flamed maple um, a big leaf variety and it generally has a very nice even uh, open tone uh, Maple has been, I think, unfairly characteristic um, or described as, uh, as being bright. Um, that's not necessarily the case, as Taylor's proven with their latest bracing. You've got some beautiful ebony binding on this. Let's get the back of this headstock here. Uh, that is some striped ebony with a ivory inlay. And pretty cool. It's, it's, I like that it's on the back of the headstock because it's really just for the player. Uh, the audience doesn't see that. One thing you might notice on this that wasn't on the other guitars is the top, the, the front of the headstock is also glossed. Um, kind of in, in par with us moving up in spec on the guitar. So we've got the ES2 pickup system. Again, we have ebony, fingerboard, and bridge. It's a spruce top. The spruce top on this is not just simply torfied, though. The spruce top on this is a better selection of spruce. When Taylor gets their tone woods in, they go in and they sort those. Uh, and, and by quality and by series. So if you have, for instance, Rosewood on a 700 series and Rosewood on an 800 series and Rosewood on a 900 series, and they're all East Indian Rosewood, Taylor's gone through and sorted 
that rosewood when they get it so that the 900 series rosewood is better than the 8 which is better than the 7 okay so the spruce on this is a is a nice high grade of spruce higher grade than the 300 series higher grade than the 100 series we also have some nice inlays that you might notice um, on these the 600 series inlays they're done in ivory um, beautiful purfling in addition to the binding so you have some improved appointments and that's part of what you're getting with the additional price. It's beauty, it's, it's aesthetics, it's the time taken to inlay these into the fingerboard. It's time taken and the cost to put abalone around the rosette here in the top. It's the beautiful wood uh, pit guard that Taylor's now using, which is kind of an aha moment. Why, ha why don't more people do this? Because this is really uh, very nice. It feels great, it works well. Uh, I like it better than, say, a plastic pick guard on the top of a $3,000 guitar. Now, inside, the bracing is very, very different on these. Uh, back in the end of 2013, uh, really 2014, Taylor started to redo their lineup starting with the 800 series. So this has what they call performance bracing. And generally speaking, you could think of performance bracing this way. It's making the guitar more resonant, and it's being... Uh, specified by series and by body shape. So the 600 series performance bracing allows the maple to move more. The back bracing never touches the side. Uh, 14 body, a grand auditorium like this or a grand concert has angled bracing for more bass response. Um, the thickness of the wood changes um, and all of the bracing is, is changed for the tone woods and the body shape. So there's more attention to what is going on internally in the guitar. The, the basically the whole thing. There's not one thing that makes this guitar better. It's a culmination. It's all a system. So let's listen to this. Now again, the tone woods are different, so we don't expect it to sound anything like the 300 series, even though they're both all solid wood American made Taylor guitars. The bracing varies, the finish varies, the tone wood varies. But what I hope you are able to hear uh, through the recording is that this is a more resonant guitar. Uh, it, it's it's more responsive to the player. We're going to do some uh, strumming and also some finger picking uh, so that you can hear it. So I hope this video helped to explain the differences in Taylor's lineup. This isn't an exhaustive examination of every single model they make in the least. But what we're trying to do is show you that as you move up in the line, there's a reason to pay more for the guitar. You are getting more for your money. Um, things like the, the bracing and the finish and the tone woods and the aesthetics all uh, serve to make a better guitar. That being said, you get a great guitar at a low price point with the 100 series. So wherever you are price-wise looking for a guitar, Taylor has something to fill that need. And as you go up, you get more for what you pay. So if you have any questions on this, feel free to comment on the video. Give us a call uh, or send us an email or come into the store. We love to chat about stuff like this and we'll be glad to help you find your next guitar. Thanks for watching.